So I've been looking around for my next project and I thought what I'd build as a watt meter. Um, I found this, um, uh, this article in uh, QST January 2011 and uh, it looks like a simple enough watt meter that I could pull together and it's also a bit of fun. Um, so uh, I, I do have a watt meter, you've seen the probably before the QRP O meter uh, that, I, that I have here, but that only goes up to 15 watts and I wanted something that kind of measured a little bit more uh, and I didn't want to have to bring out the uh, power meter that's attached to my uh, radio, uh, which goes up to a kilowatt, but it's kind of attached to the, to the radio out in my office and I uh, kind of don't want to move it. So I was trolling around, I did see this circuit um, and fastcircuits.net, which I'll include a link below, uh, actually sell the boards to build this up. Um, so, uh, and, and also because this uh, particular kit comes, uh, it uses a, a PIC uh, microcontroller, they sell the PIC uh, pre-programmed for you as well. So kind of in a little package with the boards and the, and the, uh, and the PIC chip, so it, it's all good to go. Um, so basically, uh, what you're looking at here is a sort of a high-level component diagram of uh, of the of the power meter itself. And obviously, so we have the transmitter and the and the tuner antenna on one side. Um, a key part of this uh, type of circuit is the directional coupler. Now, uh, W2AEW has a great video on building the building and the theory of a directional coupler and. I built this uh, kind of uh, shabby, wretched looking component from it before. Um, and so there it is there. I'll include a link below to W2AEW's uh, site. But basically the way uh, the directional coupler works is, and it's kind of symmetrical, so this way or this way, it's, uh, it's identical. But what you have is it's a four port device. And you have your transmitter connected here, the antenna connected over here, and then these two ports here, at this port, you will get a sample of the forward power. In this port, you'll get a sample of the reflected power. Now, how big that sample is depends on the number of turns you've got on this, uh, on this toroid here. And you can see it's completely symmetrical. So there's a toroid, there's just a piece of RG8 that goes through there. W2AEW, go watch his video, he, he explains it far better than I, I do. And he includes the theory there. But effectively, you're getting a sample of the forward and the reflected power out of here, which you can then use to drive your watt meter. So in, in, other, in other words, if you're winding 30 turns here, then effectively you'll sample uh, minus 30 uh, dB down of output power. So moving on to the uh, to, to sort of a conceptual diagram of this watt meter, let me just move over here and get this uh, get this into focus. So we've covered the directional coupler here. Here's your transmitter it comes in through the TX port, leaves through the antenna port either to a dummy loader or an antenna, and then you get out of here the sampled forward and reflected power out of here. So let's just pick the forward uh, path because the reflected and forward path, the, the actual circuitry is identical, identical parallel path. So the next part of the, uh, of the circuit that we go through is this AD8307 IC. And uh, let me just bring up uh, the, uh, the, the uh, data sheet for that. So what this basically is, is uh, it's called a logarithmic amplifier, but basically uh, what it does is it's, um, bear with me, um, it basically takes the input power and outputs a voltage signal that's proportional to the log of that power. So you can see here on this graph from the data sheet here, so we're looking at this particular graph here, along the x-axis here is the input power in dBs, dBm in this case, and then on the y-axis, we actually have the, uh, the voltage which is, uh, appears at the output port of the 8307. So what it allows us to do is, is basically translate that input power into a, a linear with respect to the log of the power output. So after that, um, uh, after the 808307, just moving back to the, uh, to the circuit itself, the, this output now appears at this LF398. And what this LF398 is, 
is a uh, sample and hold amplifier. So what that allows the microcontroller to do is basically freeze the output signal at the same time on both the forward power and the reflected power paths so it can sample the, uh, sample the voltage at exactly the same time. So once the, uh, the forward and the reflected signals are passed to the microcontroller, Microcontroller then uses this precision, uh, voltage precision uh, reference source to actually derive what the output, uh, what the output power is. And it has some internal lookup tables in the software that do this. Um, and then finally, it computes the output power both for the forward and reflected and uh, sends a signal to the LCD to, to display it. So just moving on to what I've built up so far, and here's the, uh, here's the result. It's still a bit of a mess, but uh, this is powered from uh, uh, 110 volts, uh, passes through this uh, cheap transformer here. It's uh, fused, as you can see there, passes uh, through the, uh, through, through the off-on switch. And then there's a simple power board here. Uh, and this power board uh, outputs uh, four, uh, three needed voltages. Actually, it outputs a 15 volt signal here too, but uh, that actually isn't needed with this. So you get a minus 12 and a positive 12 um, output. And the minus 12 and the positive 12 are used by the LF398. Uh, it requires that, uh, it requires a, that, that signal. Um, the five volt uh, obviously power uh, goes to the microcontroller and the other ICs, the AD8307 is also a five volt uh, IC. Uh, now, uh, one of the things about uh, about this, uh, the AD eighty three oh sevens themselves are uh, quite expensive. Uh, I, I purchased two from DigiKey; they're about thirteen dollars fifty each. Um, so they're, they're, that's uh, that's quite expensive. I did order also some cheap Chinese knockoffs from eBay, uh, and they were eleven dollars for twenty. So obviously a huge price difference. Question is, are they going to work? So uh, when I get those in, I'll compare the real deal to the. Uh, to the cheap Chinese knockoffs, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not into building uh, super high pre precision instrument instrumentality. I'm I'm sure they'll work fine for me. I'm also waiting on the LF three nine eight. So uh, again, from uh, uh, f ordered through eBay. Now, so that's all I can do right at the moment, uh, and I can turn this on and uh, you know demonstrate it working, but. Uh, uh, what I'm, I might do actually is I don't have a PIC programmer at all. Um, I, I could get one. I mean, they're only about 30 or 40 bucks, so Amazon sells them and so on. But I'd kind of prefer to stick to AT Mega range uh, using Arduino. So what I might do as, after I get this all working is actually uh, convert the software, not convert the software, I guess rewrite the software uh, to run on, uh, on the AT Mega uh, and, and I'll use that. Um, there's a couple of things I want to change. Obviously, you know, this kind of uh, setup where you have to send, uh, you know, 16 lines through to the LCD is a pain. I'd replace that with I2C. Um, I'd actually, you know, because I'd, I'd, I'd be writing the software myself, I can, uh, this is a 16 by 2 LCD here. Um, so I, I, you know, I can uh, sort of tailor the output as well. So anyway, that's to come. Um, thought this might be of interest.